Father, in this year, we decree and declare and change. The scripture says in verse 8b, a time for war and a time for peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the kingdom of God himself against any other kingdom of the devil or demonic kingdom. If you are preparing to do this journey to enter into this fraternity of the precious blood into this journey into this garden of love jesus said i am gathering my warriors it's not like the warriors of the world but this is the warriors of prayer those who will stand like moses on behalf of the people those who call the intercessors those who will be there to encourage others in the light path. And I believe that God has chosen you, as I said last night. For that, I want to beg this. Pay attention so that you receive this message very well and be able to pass it to others. There are many people around the world in your homes who are suffering in one way or the other and they did not understand the merit of the suffering and crosses. What Nigeria is, what we are experiencing here as a country is, not, is nothing to compare to what other people are experiencing in different parts of the world. Do you agree with me? For instance, if you know a country called Syria, just in the Middle East. Can you guess how many years they are still in war now? <laughs> and the war going on is the same war going on in, the, in our country, Nigeria. A section of uh, ISIS, just like the Boko Haram, they take greater advantage. They, want, they wanted to overthrow the government for four years. Governments are there fighting them. They are capturing some parts. They are fighting back. At times, the war is becoming almost balanced. So we don't know who owns the country, whether the, those uh, Islamic sets or the government. So it's a very terrible war. People are dying every minute, every second. Even in Libya here, this is our Libya in African country here, where they succeed in removing Gaddafi, that country is still suffering much. In Sudan and different parts of African country, but here in our country, Nigeria, we have the, those, the terrorists are somehow put by the side. So it's, our, our own is not the worst. So, Knowing this very well, we will also bend down and pray so that what is worse will not befall us. The worst will not come. Prayer has the power to wage it. But in the midst of all this suffering and also crosses, God also used them as a means of purification, as a means of grace. Precious blood of Jesus Christ. Just like the scripture made it, St. Peter made it very clear. For the cross is, has two sides. One side for the Gentiles, for instance, is a stumbling block. I will tell you those who are Gentiles. For those who are, the, who are believers, who understand what cross means, it becomes a source of salvation and strength. For instance, now Nigeria and the world the economy is becoming harder and harder. Many of us have used them as a means to perpetuate in evil. Some youths who have no alternative, nothing to do, who doesn't see the, the need of the time to use it in a positive way has entered into robbery 
and even kidnapping going up all over the world. Then some young ones, some young ladies on their own part have decided to use that to increase their life of prostitution in one way or the other. Evil also multiply in the, in the other side. So it, the cross can also be done for to many and also resurrection to others. Whenever there is a cross like this, whenever God sends us a cross, God expects that that particular cross draw us closer to him and also lift us higher in the level of glory. But at times, when the cross comes, we see ourselves falling below and end up dying. Then, one question is this. Who is the architect of the cross? Where is the source? What is there anything to gain in our cross? From the message we have just read, very important one point I would like to use as my starting point, the premises to discuss this message. That premise is this. Every cross comes from God. Do you believe that? Yes. Every cross. Including that one, you think you are, that you are out of your own mistake. You are the one that caused cause that for yourself. Some people doubt this, this truth. And if you don't get this truth right, you will at times accept some cross. At times you will uh, reject some. You will be selecting. You know, there are different categories of cross bearers. Some people decide to accept the cross. They know that it is God. They are convinced that this cross comes from heaven, from the hand of God, direct. Maybe you, you have tried your best, you have done all that, eventually you see yourself suffering. That's, you, can't, you don't know how to go about it. Okay, I have nothing to say. It is God who gives it to me. You accept that. Some other people accept some cross when they see that they cannot do otherwise. They accept it. Some people now say, there is some crosses made by the evil one. I cannot carry the cross Satan has given to me. If you know you have this type of mind, do you have that, some people have that type of mind? Yes. How can I bear a cross made by Satan? Is it good to bear that? Can Satan have a, produce a cross? <laughs> understand it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a serious problem even in the philosophical world people keep on asking this question what is the source of evil in the world if God is the all powerful and he can see everything he has power to remove evil in the world why is it that they are still evil is either one man carry on to say, is either that God is all powerful but refuse to remove those evil? In this sense, he is not a merciful God again. He's a malevolent God. He's a God who likes to suffer people, something like that. But again, if he, if he wants to do it to remove evil and he cannot remove that evil, it means that he's not all powerful again. So the question has been there. People ask that. Then answer now and be cross as cross. Can there be a, some God give or can? If God is even giving cross, how can a good God? being as 
beautiful, as merciful, who even come and die and say it's over. How can he allow us to suffer? Why? This question can keep people outside the faith. They begin to question God. Are you sure you are there? I know that there are many of us who have, in our own suffering, asked God, God, are you still alive? I know many have asked that question. Where are you that your son, your daughter, is suffering this type of thing? Show me your face. Are you still alive? Don't allow the enemy to laugh at me. And God will be there watching. And the worst that may be is that you have done all the necessary thing you're supposed to do. You have fasted. You have booked masses up to one year mass. Things is not nothing removed. You see those who doesn't know how to pray. They don't even go to morning masses. Talkers of going to Sunday mass. You see them prospering and things are going well. Is it that you are the God? God doesn't want you to pray or to remain a Christian. What is the cause? Why is that cross? Are you getting my question? Yes. All these things is what we want to answer in this short reflection. We want to answer that, if that puzzling questions, disturbing the mind. Now, who, what is actually the cross? Can there be a man, can there be anyone existing under the sun without a cross? Yeah? Then the last question before I start my reflection is, what is then the measure of cross? When I say the measure, cross is, how can you weigh the cross and know the weight? Which cross is greater than other? Or can we say that the crosses are of the same measure? What is the determinant of the weight of a cross? For instance, let me bring two comparison. Which one would you choose? To become blind or to become a cripple? Choose one. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You don't want to use anyone? Okay. This is, okay, which one is better? Let all your body be okay, but you become a madman or a mad woman. Which one is better? No, you now find out that, okay, some people now say, okay, there are many types of suffering going on in the world. Which one is better for you? For anybody, you cannot say this cross is lighter, this one is not lighter, the other way around. Okay, we now proceed in the message. Because of the, this concept of cross and suffering in the world, our Lord is now calling us as a warrior in order to train us, to give us the right message, to, for us to conceive the nature and the meaning of the cross. Cross itself is a mystery in the world. It's completely a mystery in the world. People have, some people have taken advantage of this mystery and they go on to preach, to preach the message of Christ in such a way that as far as you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, cross will go out of you. Come to my church, I will remove, because they know that everybody wants to come out of cross and suffering. People are now preaching, come, I will deliver you from all the crosses you, you have in the world. And you can see at times some form of advertisement, power pack, deliverance, liberation, uh, overnight. They will put all these in advertisement, flash them in television, come, total healing. Prosperity, and they mention them. All those that entices us that we desire, all of them will be itemized. So, and they will flash in them one by one. Who will hear such without trying to go 
and find out how to receive them. And in this way, many flock of God has been taken away, drawn out. But the truth is this, we cannot deceive. All those who preach such cannot deceive the world forever. Europe has fallen, as I said yesterday, because of this type of secularism, this modernity. The, 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 the moment such type of preaching was going on over there, now people now discover that there is something that you cannot remove without seeking it in the right in the mind of God. Those who one of them who oppose it vehemently is now is named Kamas. In fact, he said that the people, those who are called they say religious or religion who are preaching this type of prosperity and all that, they are deceivers. They only use this to enrich themselves. His word was so powerful that he influenced a lot of people. Faith started going down. Those who had been putting their trust, you know, there's a conception that people are told that the moment you become a child of God, there will be no suffering anymore. Those who discover that are now losing hope. So, okay, since it is this way, let us not go to church again. You go to the church on Sunday Mass, the only people you will see there are old people, 70, 80 years, you can't see any youth in the church. And it, it gradually, you know, gradually it will, come, it will enter here. And that will be the end of different churches and mosques you see everywhere. Over there, even monasteries and others have been used now as hotels and theaters, big churches, and that is loss of faith. So for us to understand that loss of faith is also as a result of false doctrine, so we should be careful not to be a victim. What is actually the cross? When Christ came into this world, Jesus actually did not come to destroy and remove the cross. What he actually did is to change the face of the cross and cross become a source of merit. I describe it in a few words. That's the way I normally explain it. I talk about the three worlds. The first world is that garden of Adam you call the paradise. I want you to see how I want to connect this as a simple explanation to help us as a foundation to this little reflection. This first world is at that moment when Adam and Eve are living in the garden of Adam, we call them, call that place paradise. There's nothing like suffering. But after a while, they could not keep to the faith. They disobey. Then sin came in. God has to, the, if you read the, gospel, the, the Genesis, you find out that God had to send them out of that garden with, to a, a great, with, with a great sword of fire. And the angel pushed them out of the, the place that they will never come back to that place again. And they enter into another world. You can even call it another world in that face. The world of sin. We are iniquity continue to increase. No mercy. And that is the word of suffering. Man ha have to receive that cause of suffering and death. Cain becomes so wicked as to kill his own brother. And until God suffer him, he becomes a madman. Evil continue that God himself regretted. Why have I created the world? At the moment... God has to see the need of saving this world. He used many means. Do all sorts of covenants. All of them we are pointing at the final covenant with the blood of the Son of God. So when Christ came into the world, Christ opened up another God, another world within this world of sin and draw the merit of the suffering together, everything that we receive as a cause becomes blessing. Suffering is no longer 
useless. And that is why Christ has to suffer and show us example. He made this very clear. No teacher, uh, no uh, student will be greater than the master. He said, if I, you are Savior, suffer like this, what will they, what will you not suffer? If they treat me this way, the same way they will treat you. You cannot be my disciple unless you do what? You reject yourself, denounce everything, carry your cross and follow me all the days of your life. So it is now an invitation that every one of us who want to enter into the world, the world which we call now the world of grace, and that is one point I want to mention, grace. The teaching about grace is one of the teaching of the new, new era. So Christ created this world of grace. The tree of man's downfall become the tree of victory. The cross that has brought about destruction of man becomes a source of merit and grace. In fact, death, every, those costs God gave man at the Garden of Eden, when God calls, everything becomes grace. For instance, that particular cause that when God gave a, a woman a cause, that you see, you will, before you give birth, you, you will always feel great pain, but you will always desire your husband. You, can, you, will be, you cannot do without, even though it's painful to be with him, but you can never go out without him. The same thing turned to a blessing. The church of Christ in this world of grace can never do without Christ. Even though that the way is hard, the lovers, those who understand, will be drawing there. This is a grace. This is a blessing in, this, in disguise. We always desire to love. Praise the Lord of Jesus Christ. This thing is not something far-fetched. I normally dis use a description of Calvary to tell you that three types of cross always appear before us. Just like we have three crosses on the Calvary. The cross where Jesus Christ was hanging, which is taking every man back to the Garden of Eden. So that three crosses represent the same three worlds. The world of Seen the world of grace and the new garden of Adam, the world of redemption. As we have the cross of grace, the cross of redemption, and the cross of domination. Three, the three thieves, the two thieves hanging beside Jesus on the cross, those one, those two thieves, represent. They, they Almost the entire world represents the two worlds, the world of sin and the world of grace. In short, each of the thief is representing, is bearing the flag of a particular group in this world. For example, though that thief at the left side, who refused or who did not value his cross, who did not acknowledge his own suffering. Even though he's, he's a thief, he is one that caused his, his, uh, his death. He is suffering for what he has done. But he did not look and connect his cross to Christ. He is the one representing all those who in this world still did not see the merit of their cross. Who are there on top of their crosses, searching and looking for miracle. If you look, at, if you can read the scripture and see the attitude of that man, that particular thief, that is the attitude of all those who here on our, in this present world doesn't value the cross. First, this cross, he is the he is the one. If we do look look at it critically and ordinarily, he is the one that made this cross for himself. Is it not? He is a thief. Out of his evil doer, he was caught, put in the prison. Then he hung on there. 
he is dying for his own sin. But something is very close. He is not lucky. He's not a lucky thief. For because he, he did not have the opportunity, he, he had never entered into the world of grace to know that he is standing beside the Savior. He could not look. And when he sees the Savior, what he asks is, I think this man is the Son of God. You see, they know he's the Son of God. He recognizes that he is the Son of God. But he, he now put doubt. If you are the Son of God, why can't you save me, save us? Bring us down here and save yourself. You see how he's looking for a miracle to come down from the cross. Praise the Lord of Jesus Christ. That cross could have been the easiest way for the two thieves to enter paradise. But see, the cross is now a means of destruction for him. Look at the other thief. Very simple. The other thief was hanging beside Christ. A lucky one. He scolded the other one. Say, shut up your mouth. Don't you know that this man is a holy man, is a prophet, he doesn't do anything. We are the one that have done many things. So he used that opportunity to link his own cross with that of Jesus Christ and said, remember me when you do what? And that ends up. And that is exactly what we need over the cross. All those who are suffering one thing or the other and they carry that particular suffering and they're looking down, complaining, looking for a miracle. Not, they are not able to connect it or they are struggling to come down out of that cross. We eventually end up like this uh, unlucky thief who eventually end up in hell, so to say. Praise the blood of Jesus Christ. So you cannot be without the cross. So Jesus Christ standing in the middle on the cross invite us, as he said, when I am lifted up, I will do what? I will draw all men to myself. He wants all of us to be lifted up. One thing is to carry the cross. Another thing is to carry the cross to Calvary. Another thing is to allow yourself to be nailed on the cross. The last thing is to be lifted up on the cross. And the last, last thing is to look why on the cross to remember that you are not hanging alone, that you are hanging beside the cross, the, the one who has the power to save. This is the wisdom of God. This is the mystery of the cross. It doesn't start now. In the olden days, when the people of Israel sinned against God, God did an interesting thing. God sent them scorpion, as I explained yesterday. Scorpion everywhere. No, scorpion, serpent. Serpent everywhere. That there's no way you will march. You are marching on top of serpent in the desert. So the serpent was biting them, beating them, and many of them are dying. In fact, if he beat you, that is death. Moses cried and God said, okay, since they have done this, mold a serpent, set it up in a, a standard. Anyone who, is, who will be able to look up and see that will not die. God did not remove the serpent. Serpent continued to, to bite them and those who refuse to look up, who are looking, at, looking down or complaining or trying to kill the serpent are those who are dying. But those who did not mind the pain and the poison of the serpent and continue to look up in faith, to gaze up to the cross, did not die. And they are the ones that received salvation until the time of that prayer was over. The same thing now in our generation, in our time. Anyone who did not see the need to find the message of God, how to connect God when you are suffering. All those who did not see the need of 
making this connection, we allow their cross to destroy them. And they will keep on complaining. Your own cross is not more than you can carry. Tomorrow you are going to read the white consecration, the seven followers. Your own cross has been measured. You are equal to your cross. You can't carry my own cross. I can't carry your own cross. But when the cross is being carried there in union with Christ, that is the cross of grace. What then is the grace as a means of conclusion of this reflection? What then is a grace? Precious blood of Jesus Christ. Grace. In Hebrew language, they call it what? Amala. In uh, TV language, what is that name? Grace. Gracia. Who gives you the word gracia? Gracia is not a TV language. Gracia. Gracia is a Latin word. Okay. Which, yeah, yellow by here. What, what yellow by people call grace? What? Oreo fair. Wonderful. Then, Ephic. Aquiban, is this a fic? We have them. What is a caraba? What is a grace? You don't know, you don't have grace in your language. What? What I don't hear what he said. He come in fun. Okay. I would like you to understand this word in your dialect. Grace. The grace shows that actually the, the understanding of grace literally will tell you that you, don't, you, don't, you have no merit of this. It is a free gift. God, the, the person giving it to you is giving it to you because he wants you to take advantage of it. If Somebody, maybe, you, are, you have written an exam, they say, okay, let us give you a grace of one minute. It's just giving you that because it's, you have already used up what you have. There is nothing you need again. They are giving you this for the, same, for the fact that they want to just provide this thing for you. I want you to use that concept to understand what actually the grace is. After the fall of man, Man has nothing, no extra time. For instance, Lucifer doesn't have extra time. Doesn't have the grace, a, a time, a period of grace. What is that? What, why did God provide this grace? This grace is like God has seen the love he has for man. By necessity of his being, he was able to give his son the coming of Jesus Christ into the world to redeem man is an extra, extra chance, what they call second chance. And this second chance itself is a merit, is a grace. We do not merit it. Now, God now came into the world, Christ Jesus, died on the cross, then changed the face of our course into an, a, another merit. He said, okay, you have, you have a suffering. Suffering is there. This suffering is no longer a useless suffering. This suffering has a value and a to it. The union with my own suffering. What makes you Because there is no suffering of the saints or even the martyrs. If, if all the martyrs give themselves to die, they have, they have no one merit to compare to the merit of the agony of Christ in a minute. That is why the Holy Mass, which we celebrate every day, 
has the greatest of all the graces. Because what we are doing here is not the sacrifice of man. Remember that in the olden days, they have been killing bulls. Look at what David did. As the Ark of Covenant comes from the house of Abinadab to, to, the, to Mount Zion, every step, do you know how many lands that are Moses are Every step, the people march. He slaughter almost a, not a number of lambs. Every step. As even they are, they are moving from here to the school. Count the uh, steps. Which means that David slaughter thousands or thousand lambs in order to do a sacrifice. But all these lambs and sacrifice does not watch this side, that is the sweat of blood of Christ at Gethsemane. To show you the infinite power. Because it is God himself suffering in us. It is God that is being immolated. So the, the suffering of Christ himself has infinite value. What we now do as those who are gaining that blessing now is that when we share in the suffering of Christ, when we suffer, we suffer, our suffering gain merit in the suffering of Jesus Christ. So that's why we say in union with the infinite merit of the suffering of Christ, our suffering become valuable, become then, now gain infinite merit for those who were able to unite their suffering. That is that link. That thief at the, at the cross, the one who linked his uh, suffering with Christ. Though he has been a thief, he has been doing a lot of things, but for the fact that he was able to say, feel that sorry, I, I'm sorry, and able to connect himself with that of Christ, the agony he's suffering that is useless suffering, dying uselessly on the cross. Now, link up and become an infinite suffering that was able to gain eternity for him. Let me use an example. A young girl has missed up the way out of ignorance, lived so bad a life, and eventually contacted AIDS, HIV. That HIV he contacted is, yeah, can be a ticket to heaven. Do you hear what I said? Yes. It can also be a ticket to what? Yes. To hell. At the same time. It can be a ticket to heaven if the person realizes, ah, I, have been, I have been sinning. I say, God, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. I now unite the pain of this sickness with your infinite death on Calvary. To use the less, the little time that is remaining, even if it is only one day, to console you, to live for you. That suffering, which he is suffering for him, for herself, will automatically at that moment become an infinite grace. That moment, then he just say, "God have mercy." Maybe he finished saying that word and die, automatically heaven. But it will also be a damnation like the other one. Who will look at it and say, what will I use myself to do? Somebody has given me this. Let me go on and uh, distribute it to as many people as possible. Such a person is like those who say, since God doesn't want to remove it, let me share it. You only buy a ticket to hell. Immediately, that's the person is already ending up. So, what is the, the point, the message there is this. Your own sin and your weakness doesn't matter much in the presence of God. What matters is, who are you as you receive the message? Some sense say that nobody knows the truth without going on to it. Many people who are sinners, who goes on doing a lot of evil, is because they don't know that what they are doing is evil. It's ignorance. If they know the truth, if their eyes open, they can give up everything and serve God. If there is a mistake you are doing, it's because you don't understand. It is ignorance. 
And you can come out of that ignorance if eventually you ask for the grace. Precious blood of Jesus Christ. In this way, we now see that there is nobody that God has created to go to hell. Or God has now said, this person, you must suffer. You, you are, you, no matter whatever you do, you are already destined to hell. No. We have equal chance. Because we are created free. We have our free will to say, this is what I want to do. What you are suffering now, anything you see yourself suffering now, can be a means of salvation. For example, you as a widow, you, have, you lost your husband. That period may be a period of you becoming so devoted to God and come closer to marry Jesus Christ. Do you know that? Yes. It can also be another moment where you will begin to look for exterior consolation and looking for another person who will come and support you and be helping you. From there, you end up what? In hell. So, you have every opportunity. Crosses is not the end of it. It is what we use the cross to do. Let it be a means of salvation to bring us closer to God. I will conclude with a few words of admonition. When you get yourself consecrated to the place of blood, don't think that the moment you consecrate, God will remove all the suffering. It doesn't mean that way. Jesus said uh, in one of the messages, in fact, if we read it today, he said, the charities I desire so much is what I do what? I offer to my lovers. And that is charities of what? He said, you even suffer more when you are rejecting that cross. That the cross that is, that is not received, any cross that you did not accept, is what? An agony of Christ that is not consoled. It's a powerful word. How? It is a not consoled because Christ expects that this particular cross and suffering you are facing right now is a means you will use a special opportunity for you to glorify his holy name and console him. To prove to all the other people in the world that somebody can still be suffering this way and still be praising him. And in that way, you are opening up the gate of blessing and graces for yourself. Precious blood of Jesus Christ. But some people may have this opportunity, we have this very uh, 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 bad conception, whenever a, a, a cross comes around them, they attribute it to human being, to their neighbor, to their, their uncle, to these people, and instead of accepting that, which will become a means, an open door to convert even those who are persecuting you, then you go on to fight. As you go on to fight, you 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 be restless all through your life. You go on to fight. Not only as you go on to fight, you see yourself uh, committing more sin, even abusing the name of God. So, an admonition number one is make it a point of duty to know that coming to consecrate is coming into the heart of love. One saint, I think, re revealed to our message again, and even show much. Saint Teresa of Avila remember telling us a story of how God keep on increasing, increasing her suffering, her cross. He was able to complain. Eventually, Christ made it very clear to her that for those whom He loves, He do what He chastises most. You, when God chastises you, not chastises you to death, but chastises you in such a way that he draws you into the light of grace. This message is very important for us as those coming to console him, to adore him. Jesus is interested in that. Not because he's someone, someone says, why, why is he chastising? What is he drawing? What is he gaining in chastising us? 
He gains something in chastising you. He only lifting you up into a level where you become even higher than the angels. Because you, you are suffering something. You are feeling something for Christ. You are suffering. You are sharing in that work of redemption. In short, as a, as a cool bearer of agony of Christ, you are a little redeemer. God could have done this without anyone. But God is now giving us a special grace to cooperate with him in this work of redemption. Just like God is choosing among us priests who will represent him from our, our, our people among us. God raised up some people and called them priests to stand in the person of Christ. This is what God doesn't do to angels. It's a privilege given to man. God could have, from heaven, be sending special priests. But he did not do that. From among us, he raised some people, elevated them above others to become priests. In the same way, St. Paul tells us, all of us are priests of God. This is the holy nation adopted God adopted us and they revealed us higher than other levels. It's a special blessing for us to understand it. But for those who did not get this in well, they see themselves that cross of life is a, a cause. God has is there to destroy us and others. Final admonition is that when cross is being pushed by the side, it is shows that the, the person who is bearing that cross will suffer more. If you push any cross, the cross will push you back. You push, you push you. And when of you are doing push and push, you will, you will eventually find yourself down. The reason is that you will not be happy, you will be regretted because you cannot suppress it. It is part and parcel of you. Even the sleeping you are sleeping is a cross. There is a story I tell here, I said, I have mentioned here, which is good to repeat for the young ones coming to consecration. I said, I have a, a, we have a friend of a pastor. He's a charismatic letter who later lived and opened his own church and started preaching, preaching uh, this liberation cross that if you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, no suffering again. You will not experience, in short, it is, he said, because we, we don't have the, we, we don't claim the power of our world. That there is power in the world, which if we say it shall be, it shall be for us. That God has already promised the wealth of nation, the wealth of Abraham, all those things is, is us. Because we don't, we don't have power to draw them. That the moment we have power to draw them, all sickness die. That is, it is the suffering and sickness is for those who have not believed. That if you believe and the anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon you, suffering disappear. This is the message he at his center as his center of his preaching. And he was winning souls, many followers. You know, many of you who many of us who's in life suffering become members of the church. They are coming and he's doing he's, he sees himself healthy and eating very well. Then he feels that suffering has eluded him. God said, God wanted to save him. God wanted to save him from that pride. He suffer. God give him a small cross, small one, that will help him to come back to his senses. He give him prostrate. You know what is prostrate? So men will know what it is. Then he started suffering it. He prayed and fast and fast and fast. I refused to accept it. That this this thing is maybe is an attack. That maybe he went for prayer somewhere. They have sent the attack. The attack, that is the cause of this prostrate. He pray, pray to cancel it. The thing refused. Because he did not accept it, the BP go high. He received, he entered into hypertension. Double. From one cross, God now cross it. He, he, he adds more weight. The BP goes up. He, he refused to accept it. He pray, pray, and he could not sleep again. He will call to the believers, I, I, have, I have been shot, spiritual, spiritual, Bob, 
they have used spiritual uh, bomb to hammer. And again, he doesn't even know that the BP goes with headache. He doesn't have an eye problem. You can't close eyes well. Headache. Everything is going. Any, when headache comes, he says, attack, attack, girl, get my Bible, get my Bible. He, he Instead of coming down, allow peace to come so that the BP will go down. He will see if you didn't uh, make a noise. The headache continues. The blood pressure going up. This is what this man continue until the thing enter into stroke. God will make it three. Three crosses in one. There is sitting there. I happened to meet, he said, uh, Sir Barnabas, God had disappointed me. <laughs> Upon all that I have done to him. Upon the message, the, God knows that I have devoted my life to work for him, to preach, to get flock for him. He has disappointed me. He allowed my enemy to laugh at me. My enemy has dev 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 devastated me. The attack has killed me. How, where is God? Why, how can God do this? I try to tell him that this is a, a special gift of love. He did not believe that it's a special chalice. God will actually want to draw you closer to his heart to show you that he loves you. This is a special blessing. Calm down. When you accept it, you will, you will, some of them will disappear. Anyone that does not disappear is a special which God wants you to carry. This is a mark you have to show Christ as you are coming up to Calvary, coming up to the paradise. You know, you see those thousands of people who have washed their robe with the blood of the lamb. How can the blood wash clothes? He said, you are washing it with the what? The blood of cross. Purification. So, trying to help him, he said, no. Panabat, he didn't get it. <laughs> you don't get it. The whole thing is that the enemy is an attack. I know where I get this attack. I know where I get it. That place where I went for prayer, maybe I did not fast as I was supposed to fast. Are you the one fighting? You are not the one fighting. Because you carry yourself, you are the enemy. You think that when you know, anointing, is it your, 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 your breath that is pushing people down? God wants to save you. But unfortunately, in agony, in pain, in regret, in abuse of the name of God, he passed to the next world. How many of us here have been maybe in this negation? We may have people, friends, who are suffering this way. Because they think that cross is only falling to those who are sinners. Good people suffer. If you read the life of the saints, you know that yes, the forces of rigori suffer 12 different Cardiac sickness, serious sickness. Benedict of Lords suffer a lot. It is after her death that she become incorrectable, and people begin to see how can this sickly woman now the body is now greater Some people God will give them mark as a stigma. Do you think that is a is a guy? Is a a special, this is, I think that somebody begin to breathe, the hand begin to breathe, the head, like spider pew, all those things. It's sickness. It's a cross. Don't you know? Yes. Or do you like it? You like, you like that? <laughs> if you carry it one night, fly. You know, especially in this type of Africa where you don't have a good medical people, fly will be following you. All these flies will be throwing you all your heads. You will be smelling like. Huh. <laughs> don't pray for that. You think that is a, is a special grace. If you don't have the grace, don't ask for such. So, what I'm saying is that God has started to suffer. Many people have carried a lot of crosses in their life. And they are still happy doing it. And in the end of everything, they see the grace and the blessing. Ask your friend beside you, what cross are you carrying now?
tell him or her that it is a cross of grace. Don't reject it. Very good. Come, holy people. Let's worship and bow down. For the Lord our Maker. For He is our God. And we have the people from His pastor. Celebrate Jesus in the house. Come on. I will see. 